Hey guys, my name is Crystal and today we are going to talk about how to wire condenser motors, whether the OEM or a universal motor. This will cover both the four wire and the three wire setup. On most motors, you'll find a wiring diagram. I say most because not all of them do it. This is why it's especially important to take pictures of where your motor wires are connected. Your motor should be connected by four bolts attached to your lid and then hang upside down. There are some older or different styles that have the motor in a belly band with the shaft pointing up instead of down, but for most of you it will look like this. If you want tips on how to replace your motor, check out our other video tutorial with a step-by-step -step breakdown. This little guy is what you would call a dual-run capacitor. It's used for both your motor and your compressor. You should see these labels at the top of your capacitor. To describe briefly what it does, a capacitor disperses an electrical charge to both your fan motor and your compressor. Just like condensers, these are different. These numbers have to match, especially motors. Compressors have a little bit of leniency, but not much. Despite what some people will tell you, putting a larger capacitor on a motor that takes a smaller sized capacitor will cause the motor to overamp and eventually burn out. The labels on the capacitor will say HERM, which is for your compressor wire, the fan is for the brown wire from the motor. It, well, in this case, it's the brown. And then on this motor, the purple would go to the C or your common. The C is your other leg of power, which will have a jumper wire that goes on it from back to the contactor. So to review, the black wire goes to the contactor for the one side of the 120. The purple wire goes to the C on the capacitor for the other leg of the 120, and the brown wire connects to the fan on your capacitor, like so. Just like everything else, your contactor might look different. It could have a single button or switch with a solid one. It could have two buttons or what we call poles, or it could even have three. When your thermostat is turned to cooling, it sends the signal out to the condenser to turn on. What happens is the 224 volt lines that come in on either side of your contactor will signal the contactor to pull in and make contact. Once it makes contact, it will close the circuit and allow the 240 volts through to get to your condenser. Always make sure you take pictures uh, before removing any wires, but normally your black wire from your motor, if it is the black one, again, you need to check the wiring diagram. That black wire from the motor needs to be on the side of the contactor in which the power comes through, not on the side where the power comes in from your home. Each side of the contactor is a separate pole but the four quick connects on each side are on the same leg. So we've kind of established our motors are all different. Pay attention to the voltage. A lot of people get hung up on amp draw. The difference between a motor that draws 1.5 amps versus say up to maybe 2, 2.1, isn't saying that it will draw more than the original. It's whatever your original motor you use. Never change your horsepower or RPM, even if the capacitor matches. Your fan blades are designed for that RPM and horsepower. Unless, of course, it's your dream to have always had your fan blade fly apart and crash into wires or your compressor. If it doesn't list it, Look at the direction the fan blades are spinning when you look down from above into your unit. When you replace your motor, the air should be blowing out of the unit, not into the unit. Let's move on to four-wire setups. 
Most units are three wires for a motor, specifically a condenser motor. Unless, of course, you have what's known as an ECM motor or an electronic communicating motor. Again, make sure the motor you purchase will run on the same capacitor and that it matches your original motor's specifications. Multi-horsepower motors like these fall under that category. The great thing about universal motors are they can go either direction. So if it's spinning the wrong way, you swap two wires and you're good to go. If you need to purchase a second smaller capacitor for your motor, if say the new motor takes a different size, you would be doing what's called a four wire setup, which I'll demonstrate here. When a capacitor has only two poles like this one, there's no polarity, meaning it's just a line through. As long as you place one wire on each pole, it will work. So boop, and then boop. Next, we have two power wires marked as line, like the OEM. Remember where your black wire went on your contactor? The universal motor wire will go in the same spot on the same side. The other wire, in this case, the white wire, will go on the same side, but on the other pole, like this, as long as they are not on the same pole. This is how a four wire setup should look. Thanks for watching another OTP HVAC school. And again, just comment below if you have any questions and we look forward to posting our next episode. If you'd like to see more episodes like this, just hit the subscribe and do us a favor and hit like. Thanks so much guys and have a wonderful rest of your week.